Welcome back everybody, this is Eric here, Moss Pawn and Gun. Today we've got a pretty unique video for you. You guys might remember uh, when we did our man can announcement for June, you know, we had the RE Factor uh, Wilderness Survival card that went out in the man cans. We thought it would be a, a fun concept to put some of these items to use and show them off for you a little bit. Um, but you know, I'm not quite so savvy with this sort of stuff, but I've got a gentleman here that is. This is Scott Moore, Whack Outdoors. He is a wilderness and survival expert, as well as a primitive weapons expert. And he's taken some uh, time out of his busy schedule to, uh, we're gonna pick a few things apart on the RE Factor uh, card here and put them to use. So in case you guys don't know, the card is basically like a little wallet sized card. You just put it in your wallet and you've got all of these interesting little things, little gadgets that are intermingled into this card uh, that can come in immensely useful in a survival situation, okay? On the back of the card, you've got a few arrowheads. You've got a small game style arrowhead, which one you'll see in a moment, you made some modifications to. We've got some fishing hooks, sewing needles, snares, tweezers, all a uh, lot of random things to include a trident. So tell us uh, about what your opinion as a survival guy is on this particular uh, card, and then also show us some of the gadgets you came up with. Here. Sure, my first take looking at the card Obviously the metal is very thin, so we're not gonna make something here to chop trees down with. But as we discussed, having anything is so much better than not having what you need. And uh, we made use of the, uh, the trident, the arrow point, and the uh, little I'll call a small game point. And I, uh, we just took and cut some twigs and made some four shafts and configured the points on the way that I thought they'd be the most useful. And just very simply, we just took a piece of cane and made an arrow with the cane that would accept the four shaft. I normally have these where they'll just be removed to slide one in and change them out because we made this on the fly green. But what we did is we just made a little four shaft and we put the, uh, we hafted the arrow point onto this one. We hafted the small game point. My take on this was to twist and bend it to create some talons that would create a really good small game point. The, we'll call the trident spear point gig, if you will. We did two configurations, just down and dirty, something quick that could be done immediately. We just cut a slot in this and put it in as it was. And this one here I thought would be more realistic for food gathering over a couple different days worth at least, was we wrapped and formed it around the shaft and actually notched the shaft so it couldn't slide off the end and just very tightly wrapped it on there. And we've already used it some, it definitely will work. And we talked with Eric about the fact of maybe getting out here a little bit later and seeing if we can uh, acquire some protein with it. Yeah, I think we definitely will. You know, from one aspect, uh, from my experience, you know, I do a lot of saltwater fishing. And if you're near the ocean, guys, there is no reason why you can't survive if you're near the ocean. You could take something like this Trident, nice uh, light rig that's easy to move around. You can gig you a flounder. Guys, you know, frogs, any, basically anything that you can, you can get close enough to with this stick to poke it, you got it, okay? So pretty interesting concept. Uh, one thing that I'll add about the card, you know, it does have a couple of small saws on it. Uh, one edge has a, uh, you know, a very coarse uh, tooth saw and uh, it seems to work well. Earlier they were doing some sawing on some we, of these. We did, we, we used the saw to cut the slots to mount the heads and it, it absolutely worked. It was a great little implement. Well, we're gonna get out uh, and, and play around with these things a little bit and try to have some fun uh, with these for you. But one thing that I wanna add that, you know, one of the uses I found for this card, you know, it says that these are snare locks and yeah, that's a snare lock, no problem. I'm not gonna insult you guys. You know what needles are, you know what uh, fishing hooks are. What I would do if, if I wanted to rig myself up something you could even take you a little bit of line. If you were so inclined, you can make yourself a little spoon out of that. Little fishing lure. So you got yourself a little fishing lure too. That's one mm -hmm. use that wasn't even stated on the card, but you can take that little piece there and rig it up, tie you some good knots if you have some fishing line on you, which you should. And uh, then you got yourself a little spoon. So you can catch you a bigger fish, more protein, less, less effort. So, uh, you know, 
pretty interesting. I think we all know how snares work. But, uh, you know, Scott has went through a lot of effort to put these uh, basic tools together. So let's get out and see if we can uh, go grab some critters. We'll do it. All right. Let's get after it. All right, guys, with the RE Factor survival card, the first thing we're going to try out is a little modified game point that Scott made here. Uh, and this arrow took a lot of thinking to get it just right. I mean, a lot of people think that this is really easy to do, and it is, I guess, in theory, but it takes a lot of practice to get something you can actually use. It, it did. We had to tweak a few things to make all the components fit snug and uh, get some fletching on the end of this. And this is a quick and dirty arrow and we're going to let it fly and see what kind of damage we can do to a watermelon. All right, let's try the watermelon out, see how well this little arrowhead holds together. Sure. Let's do it. That was pretty amazing, Scott. I'm impressed. As thin as that material is, that blade did not deform and penetrated that watermelon through and through. And I'm, we're, we're looking at, what, 14 inches of penetration? Yeah, I would say so. Uh, it stopped about where this mark is. I'll tell you what, I'm right. just going to kind of give this thing a little slice here. Sure. I don't want to damage your arrow, but yeah, that looks good. Okay. Tell you what, Chad, hold that. We're going to save that for later. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get them out here and we'll take a measurement. Yep. There, you, look at that. I think we can probably ease that out of there now. I think we can. Yep. All right, there it is. There's our arrow. So that's not bad. That's good penetration right there, guys. And the arrowhead held together. I mean, if you were to pop a small critter with this or a little, you know, some food, okay? If you were to pop yourself some food with this thing, which we just did, uh, you'd be able to probably reuse that. Absolutely. That's good to go again. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Let's save this one for later, and uh, we'll grab the traditional arrowhead, like I guess what you try to kill a deer with. Yeah. Shoot a watermelon with that see how it holds together. We'll do it. One of the concerns that we had about the uh, survival card, not really concern, but just something we thought about, is that the metal is a little bit flimsy. So we were really kind of wondering, uh, you know, how good a strength it would have. Correct. So seems to hold up just fine for that purpose. Absolutely. All right, let's move on. All right. All right, we have the second point that was part of that card. We improvised another arrow, a real quick, simple little fletching. We're gonna send it down range and see what it does to the watermelon. I believe that'll work. Scott, that was pretty dang amazing. Look that'll at work, that. that'll work went right through, cut a nice clean entrance, nice clean exit. Mm -hmm. The arrowhead did not deform. You know, Stayed guys, I, I thought that this would just be a really fun video to do because, you know, we sent out all those uh, RE Factor cards with the man can there. Right. And having Scott down, I was very lucky to, you know, be able to pick his brain and gather his expertise to show you guys what these types of improvised arrowheads will really do in, a, in sort of a real life situation. We didn't really have time to get out and, and try to kill a deer with them. But that is just amazing. Let's uh, cut this puppy open here, see what we have to work with. My nice little LT right knife here. I got this from Going Gear, guys. Certainly not an advertisement for Going Gear, but just saying. Awesome knife. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> Zoe's looking at me like she wants me to share this watermelon with her. Let's see if we can just slice that out I think that should just pull right out look at that there you go you know that arrow can probably be reused guys absolutely pretty amazing That'll stuff. work so I tell you what we still got our gigs to work with so I don't know if we're gonna have time to find any critters or, or fish but we're gonna try so let's have some fun with those gigs sure. and see how strong those uh, trident points are we'll do it good deal all right we've made improvised spears, lances, gigs, whatever you want to call them, with the, uh, the trident point out of the survival cord. We've mounted them two different ways. And just as a simulated situation, we've got a couple of russet potatoes down here in the creek. We're gonna let my sons, Dallas and Clint, go ahead and have a go at these, and we'll see what happens. Go ahead and you go first, Clint.
go. All right, that's a nice spud. If that was a nice big bullfrog or something, we'd have him in hand. No trouble at all. Let's try the same thing with one wrapped around more like a gig. All right, piece of cake. Easy. Now we've done this. We know they'll work. We're gonna go over to the pond, maybe find some live critters and give this a try. All right, guys, well, earlier, Scott and the boys went down to the creek and kind of proved the concept with the potato. It seemed to work just fine. We came over here to the pond, had a look around. It's certainly harder than it looks. When you see people on TV spearing a, you know, fish in the water or something, it's not easy. Nope, it's not as easy as it looks. Yeah, we boogered up our little trident here. All that hard work they put into this, but... Um, I think we is a subjective term, by the way. Okay, it was probably more me, yeah. I'll admit that. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this kind of quick look at the RE Factor, uh, you know, a wilderness survival card. Uh, really couldn't ask for a better person to help us demo it. You know, Scott is certainly knows his way around this kind of stuff. And really, if it weren't for him being down there and helping us, uh, you know, out with this, there's no way I'd be able to give you guys a real honest look at that card without his expertise. So uh, if you want to check out his channel, and you definitely should go to Whack Outdoors on YouTube here. Ton of great content out there that he's put together. And one thing, after spending a few days with him and his family and doing some of the bushcraft stuff and, and some of the other videos you're going to see out there, it really does take a lot of time and dedication. I mean, we spent almost an entire day just rigging up those four implements. Correct. Uh, anything that you're doing, uh, bushcraft, primitive living skills, a little bit different scenario than survival skills. It is labor intensive. It's time consuming. A lot of little meticulous work, fine motor skills. It, it, takes, it takes some effort. Yeah, I, I definitely yeah. see that. So I guess if I could impart one bit of knowledge about both the card that we're sort of, you know, a little mini review we're doing here and uh, bushcraft and survival skills in general would be that, uh, you know, proper tools in terms of building them take time and patience. It does. So uh, that's Truly something does. I've definitely learned. Scott, yeah. I really want to thank you for coming out. You're welcome. I've enjoyed every bit of it. Awesome. Uh, guys, you'll be seeing more with uh, Scott out here on the channel. Uh, we appreciate you watching. Hopefully you learned a little bit of something and hopefully we were a little bit entertaining. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.